All right, Rough Boys from Pete Townsend. And it's 8.07 in the a.m. on the mighty KRP where the doctor always delivers. Here's the boss, Springsteen, Hungry Heart. I kind of do. What happened to the heat? I, I, the uh, building furnace went out last night. I don't like this. Do something. Well, <laughs> we could huddle together. Or you could do what I've been doing to take the chill off. At eight o'clock in the morning? I don't think so. You know, of course, that liquor is not allowed at the station. Yeah. And I think it's against FCC regulations. Yeah, so it's freezing to death. <laughs> really, it kind of warms you up some. You sure don't want to? Well, maybe just a little sip. <laughs> not very much, though. Oh. These are unusual circumstances. Yes. You know, Jennifer, I've been wondering... Uh... <laughs> Just uh, how we could get together for an intimate little drink. Yuck. Yeah, somehow I thought you'd say that. I was referring to this. Oh, thank you. Ooh. He's kind of tingly, though. Tingly? <laughs> and warm, down to the toes. You don't hardly have any shoes on. Why, Johnny, thank you for noticing. I got these at Hoffman's department store last week. Hoffman's? Uh, where is that? In Dallas. Oh, yes, Dallas. You know, I've seen this particular design before in Cincinnati. Me too. Which I am mad about. Me too. But I have never before seen it in this particular color. Me neither. Why don't we toast this particular color? Oh, all righty. Uh -huh. To pale gray. Pale gray it is. <laughs> <laughs> you just love pale gray? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Jennifer, not to change the subject, but were you expecting Mr. Carlson's mother to come by the station today? No, I don't think so. Did she ever just drop by unannounced? Never. <laughs> Good. Well, I guess I should give you your shoe back. No, you keep it as a souvenir. <laughs> as a souvenir? I love it. <laughs> you know what? No, why? Uh... I feel so warm. Oh, me too, Jennifer, me too, you know. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> Baby, if you've ever wondered, wondered whatever became of me, I'm living on the air in Cincinnati, Cincinnati WKRP. Got kind of tired of packing and unpacking, town to town, up and down the dial. Just maybe think of me once in a while I'm at WKRP in Cincinnati I usually don't drink <laughs> Neither do I, at least not at eight in the morning I suppose you're here for a very important reason Yes, I am <laughs> Well... Why don't you just make yourself comfortable and I'll walk this way. <laughs> Arthur tells me he's at his desk every morning at seven. Huh. <laughs> what a laugh. He's here every day at six. He comes in at six? Usually six, but today he's just a little late. <sighs> Ooh. You know, I think I might just have a touch of this brandy. I've never been so cold in my life. Ooh. Oh, please do. Thank you. <coughs> good, good 
Lord. Where does, where does Fever get this stuff? I think at a hardware store. <laughs> I really gave him a good scare, didn't I? Johnny? Well, maybe just a little. <laughs> nice to know I haven't lost my touch. <laughs> oh, no, Mrs. Carlson, you could never do that. I don't scare you, though, do I? What a lovely coat. <laughs> Thank you. Just a little something I threw on. Same here. <laughs> Jennifer, just how much is my son really paying you? All things considered, not nearly enough. <laughs> Tell me, you know everything that goes on around here, don't you? Mm -hmm. Who's hardworking? Yes. Who's ambitious? Yes. Who's fooling around with whom? That too. <laughs> well, who is fooling around with whom? No one. No one? Oh, how times have changed. You know, when my husband Hank was running this station, it was like a soap opera up here. Has my son told you very much about my late husband? What was he like? Let's order two more brandies. Ooh, <laughs> all righty. <laughs> Johnny, Mrs. Carlson would like to see you in Mr. Carlson's office. But you must come and bring the bottle. Bring the bottle. Your husband? Oh, yes, Hank. He was a hulk of a man. And yet, he had this, this youthful something about him, this, this Huck Finn sort of quality. Hi, how's it going? Fine. Boy, this is too good to be true. I mean, two magnificent ladies. I uh, was just sitting here, uh, sipping brandy, uh, discussing God knows what. <laughs> I tell you, it's really a high voltage turn on for me. <laughs> Basically, I think everybody I know would probably give their eye teeth to be here. <laughs> For that reason, I'll be very quiet and I'll just sit down over here. This is a private conversation, Fever. Really? Put the bottle back on the table. Well, I, I guess uh, since you're drinking, it's uh, all right if I drink. I don't work here. Oh, that's a good point. Good point. And, uh, what, what, what a shame that you don't, ma'am. Uh, many is the time I've said that. Believe me, I, I wish you were around more often. Uh, and I mean that sincerely, I do. Truly, ma'am. Miss. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Why is it so cold? Morning, Krauss. Heat. There's no heat. No, if indeed, no heat. <laughs> because Mr. Carlson's mother is here. She walks in, everything freezes. She is the ice queen. But she has powers beyond any mortal woman. Are you drinking? At this hour of the morning, are you insane? <laughs> but if I had been drinking and the ice queen saw me, would I be fired? Yeah, I guess you would, yeah. Then we must prepare my defense. <laughs> Let's go into the booth. I've got a small bonfire going. Yeah. Well. I should talk to Mrs. No, Kelly. no, no, no. You must hear the true facts from these lips first, please, if any. Where's Jen? Oh, Travis, it's all so terrible. This is all that's left of her. I was on the Broadway stage. Does that surprise you? A little. What year was that? <laughs> I uh, started in the chorus, but I had talent. And before long, the parts got better. That's how I met Hank. He saw me in a play and he came backstage after the show. He congratulated me on my magnificent performance, and I congratulated him on his magnificent shoulders. <laughs> Sounds like love at first sight. You no, know, he had run out of the theater and bought me a bouquet of lovely little violets from some street vendor. The man was so corny and so completely Midwestern. We were married in six months. And he fished. Oh, God, did he. <laughs> you know, Hank loved having a good time. Too much so, I think. Sometimes he neglected the business. 
So, little by little, I got involved, and I was good at it. Well, after a while, I was running the whole thing. I just took over. That hurt, Hank. Oh, but I was too busy to notice. He felt unnecessary. And in the end, I guess that's what really... So, I guess I'd better get back to my little desk. You know, people worry when I'm not there. <laughs> better leave that here. <laughs> Wouldn't look good to have it sitting in the lobby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I'll just buzz the booth and tell Mr. Fever he's still got a job. <laughs> oh, that's nice. But do you think he ought to do it right away? <laughs> Hi, gorgeous. Any messages? <laughs> okay, fine. Herbie! Hi. Take off your coat and let me see if your belt matches your shoes. <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> WKRP. No, I'm sorry, Les Nessman is not in and we don't know when he will be in. He's a very strange man. <laughs> oh, this is Les. Hi, Les, this is Jennifer. <laughs> the message is you will be late today. Uh-huh. No, of course I'm writing this down. And you will be at this number. Okay, fine, 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 fine. Thank you for calling WKRP in Cincinnati. <laughs> Hiya, Jennifer. Uh, listen, uh, Johnny told me what happened. Andy! Let's see the boy. Give us a spin. What? Spin. Oh, I understand that uh, Mrs. Carlson's here, right? Uh-huh. Why is she here? She said it was for a very good reason. What? Don't know. Uh, don't worry about it. I'll talk with her. I'll straighten it out. Andy! Is that my shoe? Oh, uh, yeah. Honestly, <laughs> you're a reprobate and a bum. Well, we'll talk more later. Come in. Morning, Miss Carlson. Ah, uh, Mr. Travis, come in. Yes, I'm sorry it's so cold in the office this morning. Close the door. And I want to apologize for uh, Johnny Fever. Oh, sit down. Thank you. I believe it will. And none over there. <laughs> over here. <laughs> so you're a cowboy. <laughs> woke me up? All right. You told me to rush down here. You were in big trouble. Yeah, I am. I'm telling you. Charles's mother keeps calling me, you know, vague threats, that kind of stuff. What? Oh, she caught me drinking, man. Here, on the air. Oh, man. Yeah. Travis can't straighten this one out. I mean, I am screwed. I am. Wasted and wiped out forever. Not just here, wherever I go. Well, what is it I can do for you? Why don't you just go home and get some sleep? You look wrecked. Yes, as a matter of fact, I do speak for the whole station. Now I want heat and I want it now. It just so happens that because of the cold, our general sales manager, Herbert R. Tarlick Jr., has lost all feeling in his lower extremities. <laughs> so, let's get on the stick down there. Thank you and goodbye. Oh, hello. 
Hello, Venus Coffee. Oh, wonderful. Oh, make it hot. Oh. Hey, Andy. Hey, you know what? Carlson's mother's in his office. Why? I don't know. It's very strange. I think that she's drunk, if you can believe that. I think Jennifer's been drinking a little bit, too. She has? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I thought she was just making fun of me. Excuse me. Where are you going? If Jennifer's drunk, I gotta take my shot. <laughs> Listen, Herb, you fool around with Jennifer today and you're a dead man. You mean killed or merely fired? A dead man. Oh, well, hell. <laughs> Listen, another thing. I just had this very strange conversation with Mrs. Carlson in which, and I'm not kidding, she put her hand on my knee. <laughs> my right knee. Now, what do you make of that? Gee, Andy, I don't know what to say. <laughs> she kept calling me cowboy. Cowboy? Boy, oh, Andy, sounds serious. <laughs> What's serious? Mr. Carlson's mother touched Andy's person. Where? What we call the knee. Why? Because, Les, she's been drinking and I guess Andy tried to make a move. What? Wait a minute. She was just trying to be friendly and... Oh, this is disgusting. It's not disgusting. It's far from it. She was just... She was... You know, she well, was... I've lost a great deal of respect for you both. It was nothing. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is white folks' business. Wait a minute. She was just trying to be cordial. For a change. I just cannot listen to any more of this. Wait, uh, but, but... You're trying to be nice, that's all. Actually, right now would be a good time to hit her up for some station improvements. You know, this is all so unfair. I can't go see Jennifer, but you can get it on with Mr. Carlson's mother. <laughs> Les, Les, you hold me back before I kill him. Come in. <laughs> Mr. Nessman, what's new? Mrs. Carlson, do you know that I have no walls? <laughs> Excuse me. No walls. My office doesn't have any walls. Oh, well, sit down and tell me all about it. Oh, thank you. Carlson, how nice to see you. What a lovely surprise. Down, boy. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> see, Mrs. Carlson, no walls. I put the tape where walls should be. Really? Yes. To me, these are walls. <laughs> Why, Les, that's positively insane. <laughs> I adore it. I don't understand. Well, a person who thinks he has walls is infinitely more interesting than one who does. I mean, why be cooped up with walls when you can have tape? It's ingenious. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't understand. I understand perfectly. <laughs> and I want some music. I'll do it. Let me do it. Let me do it. Let me do it. Music. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. That's 
not music. No, ma'am. Sit down. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What's wrong with you? I don't know. I must have gone crazy there for a second. <laughs> Ah, Bailey, do you like Gershwin? Oh, very much. As owner of this station, I would like to hear it. I am making a request. Uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry, but Andy doesn't allow requests, and even if he did, I doubt if Johnny Fever would play it. Fever is a bum and a reprobate. I know. <laughs> Where is he? In the booth. Thank you. Good luck. Same to you, Herb. <laughs> Look, I'm not drinking. Gershwin. Gershwin, do you know of him? Yeah. Play him. On the air? <laughs> Weren't you drinking this morning? Want me to forget about it? Do you know how business deals are struck in this country? Will you play Gershwin for me? <laughs> Have you enjoyed working in this hemisphere? <laughs> this is WKRP, where the doctor dares to be different. <laughs> what are you doing? Saving my butt the American way. <laughs> Who's lost in the wood? I know that I could always be good to one who watch over me. Although he may not be the man some girls think of. As handsome, my heart, he carries the key. <laughs> Won't you tell him, please, to put on some speed? Follow my lead, oh, how I need someone. <laughs> Mrs. Carlson, would you like a couple of aspirin? No, thank you, Jennifer. That won't be necessary. All righty. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Carlson. <laughs> Mama! Where have you been? I stopped by to pick you up. You weren't there. Well, obviously. You were here. Yes, I was here, making a complete fool out of myself. You? I haven't acted this way in years. Well, I wouldn't worry about it, Mama. You see, up here, everybody makes a fool out of himself. It's okay. <laughs> you know, I've driven to every florist in this town. Can't find violets. Does it have to be violets? Well, this year, we just won't take any. You don't like doing this, do you? I don't like cemeteries, no. But it's important to me. You don't forget a man like your father. Yes, ma'am. I understand you're usually in by six. Six what? Bailey. Where were you?
you Sunday. Why? Sunday was Mr. Carlson's church auction. Well, I know. It was really embarrassing. Les Herb and I were the only employees who showed up. Well, I was called away suddenly to date. Oh, come on, Les. Nobody's ever suddenly called away to date me. I was visiting my mother. Oh, well, that's nice. How is she? Even smaller, I'm afraid. Well, I'm sorry. We had lunch together. You know, it's very disconcerting to have those two little eyes peering up at you from table level. <laughs> Well, you, you didn't really miss much, Les. I went last year. All they auctioned off was a lot of junk. Oh, they had one nice thing this year. It was this really amazing painting of a sunlit summer lawn filled with geraniums and wicker furniture. And in the background, two women strolling in the gentle summer breeze. Oh, I loved it. Did you buy it? Oh, no. The painting was the last thing auctioned off, and I couldn't afford it, so I chickened out. Well, I didn't. <laughs> Hello, Herb. You bought the painting. I did. You bought it? Don't rub it in, Bailey. Yes, this is it. This is the painting. Where were you? I was out of town. We had a date, Lester. <laughs> we were going to the auction to suck up some brownie points with the big guy by buying something together. 50-50? I waited and waited for you until there was nothing left but this painting. I had to buy it. I was visiting my mother. How is Shorty? <laughs> Watch it, Tarlick. I'll watch it, Les, when you give me the $50. That's half of what I paid for this oil slick. Now give me the money. Forget it, Herb. Herb, would you just leave Les alone? You were supposed to go to the auction because it was a worthy cause. Don't be naive, Bailey. <gasps> Herb won't even give money to Jerry Lewis's kids. <laughs> Les, I've told you a thousand times they're not Jerry's kids. They're everybody's kids. Well, that's not what Jerry says. Are you going to give me the money? No. Yes. No! All right, then. I'm just gonna have to punch you out. <laughs> you do, and I'll see you in court. You would do that, wouldn't you? Uh-huh. <laughs> Here, Bailey. Hold this. As a matter of fact, you can have it. Thank you. All right, Lester. I'm gonna go sit at my desk. And I'm going to stare at you for as long as it takes. Soon, Les, the guilt will be more than you can take. Soon, Les, it'll begin to gnaw at your insides. Soon, Les, you'll feel a sense of fairness which will compel you to do the right thing. And soon, Les, you'll beg me to release you from your guilt and sin. If you've ever wondered, wondered whatever became of me I'm living on the air in Cincinnati, Cincinnati WKRP Got kind of tired of packing and unpacking, from town to town, up and down the dial in a while I'm at WKRP in Cincinnati Oh, I dearly love the sound of a bagpipe <laughs> <coughs> uh, Good morning, Jennifer now, how, how was your weekend? Okay. It's just so unfortunate I had to be in Spain on Sunday and miss the auction. Well, thank you for those appliances you donated. Well, there are just so many washer-dryer sets a girl can own. <laughs> yeah, I bought these little fellows at the auction. You know, this kind of craftsmanship is almost a lost art, Jennifer. It's so rare to find nowadays. And it's not immature for a grown man to have toy soldiers. This is a real hobby. Nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> Oh, yes. Yeah. May I see them? Oh, absolutely. No, I caught little Arthur trying to shoot their heads off this morning. Oh, dear. Yeah, with an automatic pump gun I haven't seen before. Sometimes that boy frightens me, Jennifer. I'm sure he's just going through a stage, much like Germany did. <laughs> Sometimes I fear he's connected to some darker force that could shake the world. Well, 
maybe not. Hey, big guy, two questions. One, why is Jerry Lewis so popular in France? Ha! Just kidding. And two, how much did the auction take in? We took in over $10,000. Ooh, right on to the church. I love it. I bought a very expensive painting. You? You bought a painting? That's right, Jenny Pooh. And do I see a bullfighter emblazoned across a field of black velvet? Unfortunately, no. It's just one of those oil things. But what the heck? It's for a good cause. I didn't know you were interested in art, Herb. There are a lot of things you don't know about me, baby. I know. And thank you. Herb, is there something I can do for you? Because I'm about to become very busy here. I'd just like to say how much I enjoyed the auction. And I'm sure the staff who didn't show up had perfectly good excuses. <laughs> Except Les, of course, who did a no-show, or as Les just said to me this morning, hey, that's Baldy's auction. I've got better things to do with my Sundays. <laughs> well, I certainly appreciate your support, Herb. Oh, hey, you know, I'm just... Um, <laughs> I'm just glad I was able to open up my heart, my pocketbook, to buy a painting, which, in all honesty, I don't like that much. Poor church I'm not really a member of. To help find a cure for a disease that, quite frankly, doesn't affect that many people. Well, thank you. And I mean it. Thank you. No. Thank you. <laughs> Herb, exactly what is it that you want? Would you be interested in buying that painting back? No. Perfect. Perfect. I understand. So what if I don't have the money to take the family to Milwaukee? What? Oh, it's... Well, for months now, you know, Lucille has been planning a family trip to Milwaukee to tour the different breweries there. Her, uh... Her brother is an assistant brewmaster. Did I ever mention that? No, probably not. Well, to make a long story short, Herb, look, will you get out of my office if I buy your painting? Yes, sir. Ah, exactly how much you want for it. Well, whatever you feel in your heart is right. Oh, how about $10? Oh, gosh. Uh, I probably need a little more than that. You see, I paid $150 for that painting. <laughs> Were you there when that painting was auctioned off? Yes, I believe you were. And come to think of it, I got that painting for $100. What am I thinking about? I'll give you $50 if you get out of my office right now, $20 if you're still here 20 seconds from now, and $10 if we're face-to-face -face a minute from now. I'll be right back before you can say, thanks, Sir Charlie, for helping my church. What do you mean it's your painting? Well, you gave it to me. It's mine. When? Ten minutes ago. Where? Right here. You said here. You can have it. Oh, Bailey. Bailey, Bailey, Bailey. You can have it is just a figure of speech. <laughs> People say it all the time. It doesn't mean anything. It's like, um, thanks a million or so's your mother. It's my painting, Herb. Thanks a million. <laughs> I really don't believe you. I, I just don't believe you, Bailey. You come in here every morning in your freshly pressed outfits and your freshly scrubbed face, and, and, and you sit here all day, hardly speaking above a whisper, and then when a man is, is vulnerable, shaken, upset, you, you just reach out and, and rip from him what is rightfully and fairly his. Oh, Bailey, I, I, I'm just so, so disappointed. Her, so is your mother. Good morning, boys. I'm here. I wanted you to see my new painting. Isn't it great? Don't you just love the shading and the color of the flowers? Don't you just hate the shading and the color of the flowers? Baby, don't pay any attention to those jerks. They don't know anything. Well, do you like it? I don't know. I sincerely like the frame. <laughs> Venus? Let me see. Ha, 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 ha.
That's nice. That's real nice. Thank you. Well? It's, uh... It's nice. You don't like it? I don't like it. Oh, I'm really surprised at you. I always thought you had a little taste, not as much as herbivores, but still. Oh, come on, Bailey. Before I can like a painting, I have to be able to smell the psychic sweat of the artist coming off the canvas, you know? I mean, I, 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 want, I want a sense that he shares my vision that we're all morally adrift in a chaotic world of distorted social values. I, I want to feel his, his loathing, his self-contempt and all those dark urges. I want to sense from his work that he's come to grips with his own homosexuality if not going to jail for it. I want to know... Oh, shut man... up. What? Shut up. Okay. <laughs> There it is. Leave it alone, Herb. Look, it is mine. Here's the receipt. I found it. What's going on? He gave me the painting. Now he's trying to steal it back. That's right. And I can't think of a thing that's going to stop me. What about the four of us beating you to dust? <laughs> you do. And I'll see you in court. We don't care. Can I speak privately with you in the hall? Nope. <laughs> right. Herb. <clears throat> oh, Herb. Oh, hi, Bailey. How's it going? Oh, stop it. Well, how would you feel? Oh, saving that hundred dollars to help take the little lady to Oklahoma City. <laughs> Cowboy Hall of Fame is down there, and her brother used to be trail boss. Did I ever mention that? No, oh, probably not. You found somebody to buy the painting, didn't you? Oh, Bailey, it, it's not the money. I don't care about that. Who? Mr. Carlson. I, he, he loves the darn thing. How much? How much? How much? That's English. How much? <laughs> well, I, I don't know about... About $160. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, were you in there when we talked about it? No, of course you weren't. $160. Oh, I'll give you $200. Two hundred? Oh, gee, Bailey, I don't know. I'll go to the bank at lunch. Oh, all right, if it means that much to you. Oh, it does. I love it. I love this painting. Oh, Herb, thank you. Your mother would be proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> she would. God, I have no values. So the big tall guy says to the doctor, Are you sure that's your elephant? And the doctor. <laughs> the doctor. <laughs> what? Come in. Big guy, bad news. I can't sell you that painting. Okay. So, now, the, the, the doctor takes a look over at the kangaroo who's seated further down the bar. Oh, I've heard this one. And he says, if that's your elephant, you buy him a drink. <laughs> <laughs> funny, 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 big guy. <laughs> so, Herbie, did you sell the painting to someone else? Yeah. Should have kept it. Why? Because it was donated by the Van Giesen family, Jughead. The Van Giesens, oh my. Who's that? You've never heard of them? No, maybe. Well, Herb, they're a very rich old family. You know, half the paintings at the county museum were donated by them. I knew that. <laughs> Uh-huh. Would you please have Mrs. Van Giesen call me? Right. Herbert Ruggles, R-U-G-G-L-E-S, Tarlick the third. Uh, no, 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 the fourth. Okay? Yeah, it, it, it concerns a work of art, you know, like a painting? Right. Now you have my number. Right. No. Thank you. And, au revoir. That's French. 
What an idiot. Herb? We gotta talk, Bailey. Here's my money. Huh? Don't want it. Where's my painting? Well, I, I had to take it back. Oh, no, you don't. We made a deal. Uh, Bailey, evidently you don't know what the word deal means. You see, <laughs> a deal is when papers are signed, receipts are given, legal obligations take place. I think I'll call the police. What? That's right. You would, too, wouldn't you? You're darn right. I don't care. Hello? <laughs> All right. Painting's yours. I'll just, uh, I'll just buy it back for $300. Oh, no. I like the painting. You don't. I want it. I want to admire it. I like it. I, it makes me feel good. 400 <laughs> No, you don't understand. Not everything in this world is for sale. Not everything is commerce. Five hundred dollars. Oh. All right. <laughs> Deal. Five hundred is too much. Five hundred is a price an art appreciates. <laughs> All right. Five hundred. I'll write you a check. And I want your receipt from the auction. It's tax deductible. I'll write you another receipt. You know, Bailey, deep down inside, you're just another shrewd businessman like myself. Oh, no, I am not. But I know you. You think everything's business and that everything's a deal. No, I don't. Yes, you do. You got poor Les to give you 50 bucks, didn't you? Yes, I did, thank you. I just stared at him through the DJ window till sweat rolled down the back of his neck. Fifty bucks just popped right out of his back pocket. And at home, you're a real sweet guy with the kids. I am? Okay. You're 200 and my check for three. Okay. Lester Baby! Herb, I already gave you $50. Now leave me alone. I know, and you were right all along, and I was wrong. Here's your 50 back. I won't take it. Come on, take it. No. Yes. No. Why not? Because it's not fair. Bless. Fair is just a word people use. <laughs> All right, average. You shouldn't take the 50 less. The painting's worth 500 now. Herb owes you half of that. <laughs> What's a stroke feel like? Well, obviously, you found another buyer. Half the sale price must go to less. No, I didn't find another buyer, really. I'm not lying this time. I mean, I mean I'm not lying. Now, look, I, I just want the painting. I'll tell you what, Les. I'll give you your 50, and I'll write you out a check for 100. Well... Don't do it, Les. Do it, Les. Trust me. <laughs> All right, Herb. I hate him, but he's my best friend. <laughs> Les, it's so dumb. He has found out that the painting is valuable. This is another one of his little schemes. Is that true, Herb? Okay, okay. All right, Les. It is a scheme. But when have you ever known any of my schemes to pan out, huh? I mean, when was it that I never wound up on the short end of a stick? And the 50? Her, do you know anything about a call for Ruggles the Fourth? Oh, I'll get that, thank you. Hello, Mrs. Ruggles? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Van Giesen, I'm Ruggles. Hey, listen, I purchased a painting which you donated to a church auction. Yes, right. Um, would you be so kind as to, you know, give me a brief history on that painting? Thank you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Thank you. Au revoir. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Her son did it. He paints a painting a day. Because he's in prison for selling quaaludes. Looks like the roosters have come home to roost. That's one way of putting it. I'm out. Let's see. One hundred for the painting. One hundred to less. Three hundred to Bailey. Five hundred dollars. I'm out five hundred dollars. See where greed got you? Please, Bailey. No lectures. Herb, I want to buy the painting back. You do? Yes, sir. For five hundred dollars? No, no. I'll keep my cash and I'll just tear up your check. Bailey, that... you'll be getting the painting for free. Really? That's not fair. You mean as in state fair? Oh, Bailey. Please, Herb, no lectures. Okay. You're lucky. I hope I don't get luckier. <laughs> Where is it? Behind the couch. <laughs> you know, that was a very nice thing for Bailey to do. She could have kept your check. <laughs> Yes, it was a very nice thing to do. Speaking of nice, I believe you have $150 of my money on your desk. Oh, yes. Herm, I think you ought to learn a lesson from all this. So I'm going to give this to Jerry's kids. <laughs> His real kids. Hey, Mr. Carlson. Oh, hi, Les. Say, where were you on Sunday? Yeah, where were you? I was in Dayton visiting my mother, Mr. Carlson. Something I'm sure that you can appreciate. But I wanted you to know that my thoughts were with you in your very fine auction. Well, oh, it's very kind of you, Les. And um, I would like to endorse this check in the amount of... Uh, one hundred dollars as my small way of letting you know I care. Oh, thanks, Les. Now I must say goodbye so that I can go home and prepare my work for tomorrow. Goodbye, Herb. Now, is that some kind of a guy or what, huh? You should see somebody about that. <laughs>